Hello, DEF CON. I am Dwango AC, keeper of TaskBot, this cute guy right over here. I am so thankful to not be able to see you because the lights are really bright, but I'm assuming you're in the audience. Uh, thank you very much for showing up. First of all, this is a dynamic talk that is changing by the minute. Uh, things have been developing rapidly over the course of the last week, which I didn't anticipate. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun walking through this. Uh, first of all, on my screen, I have a paper that I we just released in the last mm, seven minutes. Uh, it is at diablo.tas.bot, and you are welcome to follow along from your own personal device if you so choose to do so. Uh, what we have done is put together a document that we'll be talking about later on in the talk. Uh, there is a lot to cover of, of some background of what I'll be doing here. Uh, first of all, if you don't know me, I am known for a variety of weird things. I am a senior ambassador on site staff for taskvideos.org. I am also the founder of the Taskbot organization that does tool assisted speedrun content on real hardware at places like Games Done Quick events. There's some interesting stuff that I've managed to get into over the course of the last few years, and I'm going to quickly go over some highlights from some past things that have happened. Uh, some of them are rather bizarre. Uh, there are things that I didn't expect would happen that did. Um, for instance, in 2017, there was someone named Todd Rogers who cheated at a video game. Well, he cheated all the way back in the 80s, but we found out about it in 2017. And getting involved in that little bit of, of intrigue started a process of uh, aligning me in weird ways of trying to help take down cheaters in speedruns, which is not something I expected to do. I'm used to making them and playing them on a real console for charity. Uh, so, so this talk is actually very different than most of the other talks I've given because it's really a lot more about finding something interesting going hmm, that's not right, and then somehow getting attached to these investigations and getting sidelined off in some weird project. So I want to talk to you about what happened in 2017. In the 1980s, a game for the Atari 2600 came out named Dragster, and a runner at the time, someone who was playing video games competitively named Todd Rogers, set a record of being able to complete the game, allegedly, in 5.51 seconds. In other words, the fastest amount of in-game time uh, to, to beat the game effectively. Uh, now, this ended up ultimately becoming a Guinness Book of World Records because this record that was on Twin Galaxies went unbeaten for over three decades. And there was an effort in about 2016, 2017 by tool-assisted speedrun author and TAS of Videos member Omnigamer to make a tool-assisted speedrun of the game. It's a little bit of context. You might have played a game like Metroid or Super Metroid in the past, where you get to the end of the game and it will show you how long it took you to complete the game. It shows a timer and sometimes even different graphics depending on how quickly you've managed to finish the game. So speedrunning started to become a thing based on games that encouraged you to try to beat them quickly. And a normal speedrun with human effort involves the process of grinding through, trying to play a game as quickly as possible, and from that came an off, kind of a rather interesting branch of doing this, but without any human limitations of skill, reflexes, memory, luck, things like that. And that's called a tool-assisted speedrun. One of the most famous examples of those is from 2003, someone named Morimoto released what was called a Super Mario Brothers time attack, but Super Mario Brothers 3 time attack run. Uh, it was not labeled. Uh, it was ridiculous because it had Mario jumping all over the place, randomly getting 99 lives, never dying, getting really close to enemies. And there was a labeling to say that it was a tool-assisted speedrun. And it caused a lot of, you know, pre-YouTube days controversy. Just a WMV file floating around the internet didn't have enough context to explain it. It was a tool-assisted speedrun, and ultimately something that someone named Bizquit developed NES videos, which became TAS videos, to host tool-assisted speedruns like that. In other words, you can play a game as a human, or you can use tools to play the game inside of an emulator, tools like save states, being able to stop at any point and back up and try a section again. Tools like frame advance or slow motion, being able to go forward one video frame at a time. 
uh, being able to uh, record a movie while you're going and record all of the button presses. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the difference between a speedrun and a, a tool assisted speedrun. And you see, when OmniGamer, back to our dragster story, attempted to make a tool assisted speedrun of dragster, he ran into a minor problem. Even with superhuman precision, he was unable to match Todd Rogers' time which raised some questions. So how exactly did Todd Rogers manage to beat Dragster in 5.57 seconds? Uh, in the process of this investigation, OmniGamer looked at the source code, the ROM from the cartridge. So we took the actual physical cartridge, put it in a reader, pulled the contents of the ROM off, examined the way the code worked, and determined that the fastest time that all versions of Dragster that we've ever found, prototypes through released versions, all versions had the same algorithm that would not allow for a time of, time of 5.51. In fact, the fastest speedrun time that was achievable through the code was 5.57. And in that time frame, I had already started doing something interesting with Taskbot. Uh, by 2013, I had formed a community of people taking tool-assisted speedruns and playing them back on a real hardware with our cute little mascot here. He looked a little different at the time. He was based on a Rob robot at the time, but. Uh, at that time, I had worked with a bunch of folks like True and Micro 500 and a bunch of other tools designers that created what's called a replay device that pretends to be an Atari 2600 controller. And we used Taskbot to play Dragster and beat the game on a real console with superhuman input. And the fastest time we could achieve was 5.57. In other words, we used a real console, a real cartridge, and superhuman input and couldn't reproduce the time that Todd Rogers claimed. As a result of that investigation, Todd Rogers' records were stripped from Twin Galaxies and also from Guinness Book of World Records. It was a, a huge effort on OmniGamer's part to do all of the research and to assemble all of that information, and I was really thankful to be able to play a small part in being able to do the tool-assisted speedrun on real hardware. I didn't expect to ever return to that world. That was back in 2017. And somehow this year, I've now had two separate instances of, of getting embroiled in, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're trying to do something and we think that something is cheated. The other time was in January, February, well, I guess March timeframe of this year. Uh, the Super Mario Maker community was trying to complete every single Super Mario Maker level before Nintendo shut the servers down. They had cleared all of the levels that they knew about, except one named Trimming the Herbs by a, a, tasa, by a, uh, I'm sorry, a level author named Ahoyo. And there was a massive group of people trying to grind out beating this one 10 second long speedrun oriented Super Mario Maker level. And they couldn't do it, it was really challenging. And the question became, how did they do it? Ultimately, Ahoyo came forward and said, hey, I admit it, I used tools to do this. And through that investigation, there's a series of Ars Technica articles. Uh, I worked with a team of folks in my Taskbot community and a bunch of amazing subject matter experts to recreate that tool assisted speedrun based on what Ahoyo had said. We were able to get it to work. And amazingly, not only were we able to get a tool assisted speedrun to work that was first cleared by someone who had just joined the Taskbot community, but amazingly, a human somehow, after many, many attempts, a human actually managed to clear this level that we thought was completely impossible. Uh, but yet again, I got caught up in a situation where a run was seemingly legit, a video game record seemed to be legit, but was not. So imagine my surprise when earlier this year, I worked with a speedrunner named Funkmaster MP, who runs the video game Diablo. And he came up to me and said, I would like to make a tool assisted speedrun of Diablo, let's figure out how to do this. Uh, the tools were just starting to become uh, developed to do this. Uh, it was just starting to, to come together. And uh, I said, yeah, sure, let's, let's do that. Let's, uh, let, let's, try, let's try to make a, a, a task of this. We used the fastest speed run we could find, which was on Speed Demos Archive, a website that records the fastest speed runs of games. And the run had been released, uh, or had been uh, created in 2009 by a runner named Grubo. Uh, it was a segmented run, meaning that the runner was allowed to do individual levels and uh, grind out one level and then do the next level and stitch them together. Uh, but it did represent a very fast time that we wanted to use as the basis for a tool-assisted speedrun, with the assumption that if a human could do it, that we could do it. 
The only problem was we couldn't reproduce several of the things that we saw in Grubo's run, even with superhuman precision. And it started a long conversation with a team of developers behind the Devolution and Devolution X projects that decompiled the game Diablo. Ultimately, uh, it raised enough questions that we developed a team to start to analyze this video. And the bulk of my talk today is going to be about what we found. Now, I want to play that video. And what I want you to do is I want you to, as you watch this, see if you can spot where things might be a little bit funny. Now, the downside, of course, is you're going to see this in real time, but that's OK. So this is the run. It should be on screen. And hopefully, the volume is not blastingly loud. Uh, I'm going to play this. You can see that it says uh, Speed Demos Archive Verified No Cheating. And I'm going to play this run now. So there's our title screen. You can see this was a game made by Diablo. It was originally released back in 1996. Uh, here is our screen to start the game and our character screen. Yeah, that, that's a little loud, but it should be okay. Yeah, let's turn that volume down just a hair there. So this run uh, was done by Grubo uh, on a, uh, on, on a, I believe at the time he was running a Windows, uh, I, don't, I, I don't want to speculate what operating system he was on. We never actually isolated that one. Uh, but this was done back in 2009 with the releases of Diablo that were available at that time. Uh, Diablo is, uh, by the way, a show of hands now that I can kind of sort of see you, who here has played Diablo before? Wow, almost half the audience. The sanctity of this pro that wasn't me talking, don't worry. Uh, there's going to be some random stuff. So for, observe here that uh, he walks from uh, the upstairs to the downstairs, grabs an item here, walks back down the stairs, grabs another. Actually, I guess that's where he's grabbing the item. Uh, a couple of quick notes. This particular category uh, allows rem removing those load screens from the calculated time. So again, we're going, he's going directly from the upstairs to the downstairs very rapidly. This is incredible luck that you would never find. Anyone who's played Diablo before knows that you just don't get that. That doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, okay, so here, he's killing an enemy and uh, grabbed a staff that allows him to basically warp, which you saw there. He's, he's phasing and, uh, and hopping around the level really fast. Uh, he grabbed that item from the very first enemy in the game. That happened to be dungeon level 9. That'll be important later. Uh, and again, he's just phasing and, and, and portaling, trans, uh, moving all over the place as fast as possible. Right here, he, you can see he uh, walked back to town to go buy some more items. Uh, he, did, um, uh, he did a couple of things that were way too fast there. <laughs> Right here, he is duping a stave. He's, he's, got, he's picked up an additional staff. He's going to head over to the shop and make a couple of purchases. This part is a little bit easier to, to catch in real time. Some of these things are really hard to notice unless you're, you're watching in, in slow motion. I sense a soul in search of answer. For instance, right there. All... In I sense a soul in Can we turn that volume down just a little more? It's still pretty loud. I don't have a spell ready. All right. So the, uh, the, the shop there, there was some inventory on screen. I'll be coming back to that in a second. There's a ring there. Okay, now we're back into the action. Again, a nice fast portal. There was something interesting on that screen I'll point out later. Okay, another, another set of phases. Okay, this is a battle. For anyone who's played Diablo, uh, th there's some improbably lucky things happening here. <laughs> Legitimate, though. Your madness ends. All right, we've uh, finished that fight. And now the final section. And that's it. That was the entire run. So, um, now you've, you've been a little spoiled because I accidentally left this on my screen, but that's okay. Uh, based on what you saw, did, did you guys happen to notice anything that seemed a little bit off in any of those? especially when he's played Diablo before. Uh, so 
if you, if you kind of had some suspicions that something wasn't right, what approach would you take to, to prove it? What, might, what techniques might you use? Uh, now, I'm gonna have these slides on screen, but you can also head over to diablo.task.bot to see a version that's a little bit less uh, squished. So I'm just gonna run through a little bit. We have a whole bunch of background that I've kind of already talked about here. Um, what I'm gonna do is just start at the very first thing here, which is this title screen. Uh, so if you look here, right here, the copyright date says 1996 through 2001. What the team did is made a full table of every single release of Diablo and every single bit of metadata about it. And we can see that if the copyright date shown on the screen is 2001, then it must be version 1.09 of the game. Okay, all right. So now we know what version of the game he's running, except there's one minor problem. Um, it says Diablo version 1.00 on the next screen. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so which is it? Is it Diablo 1.09 or is it Diablo 1.00? All right. So this was, this was something we saw early on that gave us some suspicion about well, how exactly was this run made anyway? So then we get to this character screen. Now, this is not all that interesting. Uh, on, uh, it's just a screenshot. But when we played the video, I was kind of talking over it a little bit, but I was quiet long enough for you to perhaps notice that there was no music playing during this character select screen. So if you go back and watch his submission, you'll note that there is no music at that point. That was only something that happened in Diablo 1.05 and later. So that means we started with 1.09, went back to 1.0 and then somehow ended up with 1.05 or later, which uh, it is, is, is kind of an interesting conundrum. Like, how, how is it that, that, that this happened? Okay, well, let, let's get into it a little bit more. Remember how you saw the stairs constantly going, from, like you'd have an upstairs and a downstairs. They'd be right next to each other. Once or twice is one thing, but he got it on nearly every level. We're like, okay, well, we want to make a tool assistant speed run. We want that. Well, we didn't know exactly what Grubo had done, which game seed he had started with, so we <laughs> made an entire open source uh, code set to entirely disassemble every little last bit of the G Diablo map generation and use those tools to identify what exact game he used. And there's some information in here that I'll uh, leave for an exercise to the reader for later. Uh, but the key thing that comes out of this is we managed to find uh, the game seed that he used for the first level. Now, quick note, Diablo is a game where every single dungeon level, dungeon levels 1 through 16, are all generated at the moment that you start the character. In other words, you have a game seed and all of your dungeon seeds are generated from that. There was only one minor problem. Uh, the next level, dungeon level 2, didn't, didn't match. Like, the, the first level matched but not the second or any of them after that. So we, we had a puzzle that we had to solve. We basically repeated the same search that we were doing 16 times for each of the dungeon levels and found that Grubo hadn't played one game of Diablo. He'd taken save files from 16, well, 15 different games and stitched them together. And because our tools are very accurate, we were able to identify the exact game time of each one of these. And you know, all of these are in 2008 all the way till this one, which is in 2009. Grubo submitted his run in 2009, in January 2009. So these are very likely the exact levels that Grubo found. Just to put some context around that, we have high confidence that we exactly matched what, what's shown on the screen to uh, the levels, and we have an appendix in this document that describes how we identified those levels in detail. But we missed two levels. Le dungeon levels three and four were entirely missing, and dungeon level nine, the one where you saw him pick up a staff from the first enemy, was there, but the items were wrong. So this definitely caused us to ask a few more questions. Like, well, okay, well, what's going on here? Uh, how did this, this, this happen? There were some other things that were very interesting. One of them was an inconsistent inventory issue. So if you're playing legitimately, you're generally going to not have any discrepancies in your run. We found a couple. For instance, in the uh, dungeon level four, we pick up a ring from that sarcophagus. Then when we're 
when, when, I'm sorry, when, I'm sorry, not we, uh, Grubo. Uh, Grubo then went to dungeon level nine and opened his inventory, which notes, we note here that there's no ring in his inventory. But later on in town, he opens his inventory again and there's the ring again. So wait a minute. We had a ring, we lost a ring, we got the ring again. How did this happen? Okay, that, that seems to be proof that there is an irregularity in the speed run. Another thing we noticed, there are, and I'm going to get into too many details on this, but there are some impossible quest combinations. There's groups of quests, for instance, Poisoned Water Supply and the Curse of King Leoric is the first group. You're going to have one of these and not the other. The other group down here, say the Butcher, Garibald the Weak, and Ogden Sign, you're going to have two out of three of those, but not all three at once. And what we found is extensive evidence of those not necessarily always aligning. Like right here we have the poisoned water supply in evidence, uh, but then later on we see that a, uh, the, doo -doo -doo -doo, the butcher's red room was present. Well, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Getting my own notes mixed up. Basically, we expected that the quest uh, Ogden Sign would not be active. If it were, these stairs here would be behind walls. Um, but most of the levels that we found in those seeds had the, those walls in place, basically meaning that the speedrun wouldn't have been completable. So we're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? So we found a couple of other inconsistencies there. Uh, a quest was available on, on dungeon level 13 uh, that, uh, that was used, but uh, I'm sorry, let me phrase this. Quest was not available, a quest was available in four of the games, so we found, found it in four of them. Uh, and if, if that had really been the case, uh, Grubo wouldn't have been able to continue forward if that had, if that had actually uh, been active. So basically, we ran into all these weird inconsistencies. Um, effectively, there were just the just wrong numbers of, of wrong combinations of quests that the game logic would never allow. We have some additional information on that in here for later. Uh, now, this is the one that was probably the most curious to us. We, we described this as inaccessible dungeon level. So when we got to dungeon level nine, we, we found the right room layout, but the problem is that uh, even with conducting a search across all ranges, we couldn't quite identify uh, any levels that exactly matched what, what, was, what was there. Basically, some context. The game Diablo uses the current epochs and uh, epo epo like the 32-bit signed integer of number of seconds since 1970 to determine what the game seed is. And in Windows, you can't really go beyond certain years. In other words, if you go beyond the year 2038, Diablo will just keep repeating the same level over and over again. There's no natural way to get to levels after that. But the only levels we found that exactly matched what we saw in Grubo's Dungeon Level 9 were in the years 2056 and the years 2074, which, which again, something just seemed really wrong about that. He played this game in 2008, 2009. So there was, there's just something really weird. And more than that, the fact that the first enemy dropped an item in a way that just would not be possible despite searching the entire 32-bit signed space every possible level, not one instance of finding that combination anywhere. Just seemed very, very strange to the team. There was also some aspects that were a little bit tricky to figure out. For instance, there's some missing gameplay, and we went so specific as to go down to a single frame. For instance, uh, there's an animation of him walking and turning. We have a first frame in Grubo's video where, uh, well, we did a demo video here. Do -do -do -do. So, this is a demo video. We, we're facing down, then we're facing away, and then we are facing away, and the right leg is in front of the left. You won't be able to see this on screen. It's way too tiny. But in Grubo's initial video, it's walking forward and then immediately goes backward with a frame missing. So there's just, for whatever reason, a single frame of video that we can, without a shadow of a doubt, say is just not there. Now, that means that the encoder might have had a problem. It doesn't necessarily mean that he cheated there. It's just odd. It did make it harder to identify where things might have been spliced incorrectly. However, there were sections that were missing gameplay entirely. For instance, when we enter dungeon level 15, this red portal is already open at the moment it 
appears, which means that that section of that portal initially opening is entirely missing. In other words, that portion of gameplay was, was cut off, which indicates a potential video splice problem. And there's a couple of other instances of that as well. Um, I talked about this earlier, uh, the, the inconsistent item drop here, where we just cannot manage to find the way that, that any way that that could have possibly happened. Uh, so uh, that's kind of a rehash, but uh, then there's another thing. There's what we describe as improbable item duplication. Uh, we see that as Grubo is walking, there are staffs that are sta like Naja's puzzler. It's being duplicated in movement. The only problem is, uh, and you can see that there are two of them here in inventory in the screenshot. The only problem with that is uh, we saw on the version screen that it was using one, version 1.0, but in version 1.0, that duping glitch is very, very difficult to do because of a very tight timing, timing loop. This likely wouldn't have been possible uh, for a human to do until Diablo version 1.02 or later. So we get, again had that weird, what's going on with these version mismatches? Um, then we ended up with this next one, which was what we described as inconsistent music playback. We went so far as to bust out everyone's favorite tool, a spectrograph. <laughs> so this is a spectrogram view. Um, and what we did is we looked at the section of video where we had some questions about how they did something. We can see footsteps, 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 footsteps. And then there's this really sharp line right here. And this sharp line is where a video splice clearly happened. You can hear the music abruptly changing. And then it, uh, the shop character starts speaking right here at this edge. Um, that basically gave us a pretty clear indication based on that, on that audible signal that there was something funny going on with, with, with this, uh, with this, section. There was, ah, there's something weird here. Then we ended up with this shop inventory, which was pretty puzzling. Uh, so there's this level, there's these items in inventory. And then on the next uh, page, there's these items. And I'll go back here. Okay. So let me see if I can get both of them on the screen. Basically, the issue is they have one set of items, and then suddenly they get a totally different set of items. The challenge with this is you'd either have to, in version 1.0 to 1.02, you'd have to walk all the way to the dungeon and walk back. Or if using version 1.03 or later, you would have to, at this point, save and then reload to force the shop to, 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 uh, to change. Um, that theoretically should have been included in here one way or another, or at least a note about it in the description, but it, that wasn't included here. So we saw this and went, hmm. There's, there's something missing in this location. Uh, then there's this fun one. Um, if you look really carefully, we have a little red section right here. It's probably not visible on the display, uh, but th this, has, this has hit points negative 22. In, <laughs> um, in this game, it is possible through certain glitches to overflow the health, and it not only gives you negative health, it even goes so far as to draw the health in the orb backward. It's drawing it from the bottom, from the top instead of the bottom. Uh, the only challenge here, though, is that the glitch was fixed in version 1.07, meaning, going back to our initial screen that said 1.09, he couldn't have used 1.09. So, we come into this, okay, well, what version did he use anyway? There's no one version where all of these factors can all be in play at the same time. So out of that, we, we came up with our own conclusions. Now, I'm going to pause here. Based on this evidence, and, and show of hands, based on the evidence that I've shown you so far, does it seem like this run is completely legitimate? Or raise your hand if you think this is perhaps not legitimate. Okay, not legitimate. Most okay, most folks are like, okay, most folks in the audience are like, eh, this is probably not legitimate. Well, that was our conclusion as well. Like, there's just so many factors here, especially given that these dungeon layouts aren't correct. And we, we spent so much time, so many members of the team spent so much time disassembling the code and diving in to understand what had happened here. Uh, but we just couldn't come up with, with any, any way to to handle this. Like, we, we knew that there was something funny. So our conclusion were, uh, at the, uh, when we finished this analysis, our conclusion was that this run should be removed from record sites. 
not just SDA, Speed Demos Archive, where the record is held now, but also Guinness Book of World Records, because there are two separate records on that site. We had attempted to contact Rubo in February through LinkedIn, didn't receive a reply, didn't have any other contact information. So the analysis you just saw was based on no information from the runner. Remember how I said I was kind of scrambling a bit? Well, that's because in the last week, we got in touch with Grubo thanks to a journalist who was interested in this story and reached out to Grubo directly using the premium LinkedIn, actually. <laughs> this is not an ad. Um, but managed to get in touch with Grubo. And suddenly, all of our carefully constructed theories got really interesting. So our talk is going to take a bit of a turn. And also, you can kind of gather that I'm kind of presenting this in a very different way than I intended to. Grubo responded just this month, just in the last week, that because it was a segmented run, everything that we saw was completely explainable and totally allowed. Specifically, that the version number seen on the initial uh, title screen versus the uh, credit screen or the splash screen and the discrepancies with versions, that was just because he'd used old encodes and just stitched all that together for flavor. It didn't matter to the timing of the run and wasn't a problem. Okay. Uh, he further said that there was an exception in place that allowed him to start runs from multiple different saves and then use tools to modify the memory and ultimately what gets saved in the save file in order to basically catch up levels to match what previous levels had done. Now, obviously, we show that that wasn't always right. There's multiple cases where, for instance, that ring that appears and then disappears and then reappears again. That's a, that, that's a little bit funny. He obviously, if he did use those tools in the way he said, there were some mistakes made. OK, not, not the end of the world. Uh, his exact quote, just so that it's here on the record, my run is a segmented spliced run, it always has been, and it was never passed off as anything else, nor was it part of any competition or leaderboards. The Speed Demos Archive page states that outright. Now, I would slightly disagree with Grubo on this point. I would say that Speed Demos Archives is a leaderboard. It is a records holding site. And furthermore, uh, it's not entirely clear how the Guinness Book of World Records ended up there, but I would say Guinness Book of World Records is a records leaderboard site in every sense of the word. So uh, that little bit of nitpick aside, Grubo's statement was basically, well, this was segmented. It was, it was possible to split wherever I wanted to. Sure, you showed that there was a video split right before the shot, but that's completely allowed. I can do that. And SDA timing says that I can remove the loading screens and just take a half second penalty. So, all right, where does this leave us? What do we do? We put a lot of effort into taking apart all of these elements only to discover that the runner didn't do this with malice, at least according to his state. And in all honesty, as, as a presenter, I have to agree with that. I don't think that Grubo maliciously tried to hurt anyone. But I need to pause there for a second because in 2009, when Grubo released this run, that was only 3 minutes and 12 seconds long using SDA timing that removed those load screens. It completely stopped speedrunning in that category. No one else could get times anywhere near what Grubo had. Why? Because none of us read what Grubo submitted in his notes and interpreted it as, oh, um, yeah, I, I just took multiple different games and hacked together the save files using external tools that wrote to memory. No one made that assumption. The exception that Grubo claims to have had is nowhere to be found. Now, that doesn't mean it didn't exist at the time. Uh, SDA staff has rotated since then. But nevertheless, there is, is doubt. Maybe Grubo did have an exception. We don't have any of the save files. The SDA folks didn't keep them. Grubo didn't keep them. Well, all right, here we are. We're in a situation where we can't prove anything necessarily outside of one aspect. It's still a little bit interesting that despite all of the disassembly we did, we never found any possible route for Grubo to produce dungeon level nine with that drop of the item right away. It simply, it can't happen. 
Uh, there's no possible way that we were able to analyze in any version oh, in any version of Diablo that uh, that could produce that. So, where does that leave us? Well, speedrunning on that category effectively stopped in 2009. No one could beat it. But in the last couple of weeks, as we've had folks streaming on Twitch and talking about uh, about hey, well, maybe maybe now we can use new new methods to complete this faster. We've now come to a place where we can get very close to Grubo's time. We won't necessarily be able to beat it with human skill just yet, but we in the last week scrounged and scraped and a whole bunch of folks on the team worked together, Stefan and Ajenbo and Funkmaster MP and Nightcat and a bunch of other folks. Uh, there's a huge credits list, by the way. Um, all got together and made a tool-assisted speedrun to demonstrate what could be done on a real legitimate playthrough where we have one game seed and all of the dungeon levels that we encounter are legitimate dungeon seeds and there's no issues whatsoever with, uh, with splicing. And I would like to just quickly show you that video. Um, I'm going to be talking over it so we'll keep the volume a little bit uh, quieter. But... It, you know, it would really help if I had the video up. <laughs> okay, let me just load that right quick. There we go. Wow, I'm looking that up. Oh, yeah, of course it's not in my history. Why would it be? <laughs> Videos. Okay. You know, it's always fun when you're doing a talk uh, and things are changing right beforehand. Uh, there it is. There's the task. Uh, all right. There we go. So I want you guys to watch this really quick. And I'll be talking over it as we go. All right. Just make sure the right task came up. Nope. It ain't there. All right. Let's hope that I don't splash my whole desktop. <laughs> all right. All right. Yep, I definitely splashed something I didn't mean to, but that's all right. There we go. Here we go. Let me make that embiggened, and I will also restart it for the sake of... of uh... There we go. Okay, so this is a tool-assisted speedrun, which isn't necessarily quite as fair. You might consider this a super-segmented run. Um, Grubo did, did his run in 27 segments. This tool-assisted speedrun is doing it in a lot more than that. But right here, we're duplicating gold by dropping it on the ground and immediately picking it back up in a way that allows us to double our gold pile every time. That, uh, you can see we played this entirely on Diablo version 1.04. Uh, here in the second is going to be the flashiest thing that happens in this run. <clears throat> we're going to go to the shop, and we're going to buy a few items. Okay, there it is. Yeah, that's, that's not fair. Um, now, as, as this is playing, what's interesting about this is that we could not possibly create a number of dungeon levels that, were, that had stairs as close as Grubo did. But what we were able to get were a fair number of them that were, were reasonably short. Uh, the first level, though, here is uh, Diablo Dungeon Level 1 here. There's a bunch of walls in the way between us and the stairs that go down. So we use a new, new glitch recently discovered that allows us to repeatedly phase without consuming any resources and just you know, go right through the walls. So while the level itself is physically a longer distance between the stairs that go up and the stairs that go down, we were still able to clear that section relatively quickly. And as you'll see, several of these are still remarkably fast. Like, hey, there's the stairs literally right there. <laughs> uh, so, while this is playing, a couple of things I want to say. Was Grubo a cheater? Was, was he actually intending to troll like Todd Rogers did? Because it, we can pretty much say that Todd Rogers was a troll. I, I think that's pretty fair to say. Every single one of his records was eliminated from Twin Galaxies and uh, Guinness Book of World Records. I think his case is very clearly a troll. The Super Mario Maker situation with a Hoyo. Was he a troll? Not well, well, sort of. He deliberately said he did this to troll people. But is he really a troll? Well, not, not really. He came forward and he admitted, okay, well, here's the tools. And he gave us the tools that he used. And he came clean. 
yes, it caused a lot of, of consternation, and it was a little bit of a bittersweet ending to the original Super Mario Maker for the Wii U. But was he really a troll? Hmm. Was he really a cheater? And, and Grubo, is, is Grubo really a cheater? And you know what? I thought so. Like, when I went through this analysis and all of these tools that we put together, yeah, I thought so. And then I talked to him. And then we kind of looked at things through a different lens of, hey, it was 2009 and things were a little bit looser at, at Speed Demos Archive back then. And records are not really intact. And was he really a cheater? You know? No, I don't think so, personally. There are other members on the team with more strong opinions about that. But at the end of the day, I'm only calling for Grubo's run to be retracted because it doesn't meet current standards. Uh, and it shouldn't have met the standards even in 2009 because of the impossibility of what, what was there. In a tool assistant speed run and a real speed run, you can't just go in and modify how the game works. If you want to do that, uh, watch some of my GDQ stuff uh, that the, the Taskbot team has done. Maybe Triforce Percent is a great one if you have not seen it before. Look up Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Beta Showcase or Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Triforce Percent. It's the same run. Highly recommend watching that. You can see what happens when you play by the game's rules on an original cartridge and, well, in that case, cartridge and on an original console. And you just use arbitrary code execution to then get the game to change how it works itself. That's totally legitimate. But modifying it externally and doing a ROM hack, that's not the same game anymore. And that's basically what happened here. The modifications that were made, even though they weren't intended to be malicious, had the impact that, you know, it, it changed things. And it made it so that people didn't have a fair shot at reproducing it. Now we can make a run that does all this crazy phasing. <laughs> oh, by the way, that, uh, that uh, is a, an alt tab to stop some, some dialogue from happening. Uh, if we'd used a different resolution, it wouldn't have hate, uh, stayed there. A couple other quick notes here. Um, this is not fully optimized as a tool-assisted speedrun. This was made rather rapidly in the last few days. Uh, it could be improved even further from where it's at. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there to the end. Um, this task is a demonstration of what the game playthrough could be legitimate. We already have, as of today, and I'll be updating the document after this talk, uh, the Diablo.Tas.Bot website, I'll be updating it with links just in the last hour and a half. Someone managed to get a time less than five minutes with a single segment attempt. Not even segmented, just a single segment attempt. We feel that even a human can manage to beat Rubo's time with legitimate stances. And here is the final boss, and... Uh, that's it. That's it. That's, that's the whole run. <laughs> this task is one second faster than Grubo without cheating. It's a completely legitimate playthrough. Okay, I have talked about a lot of crazy things. We are coming to the end of our time. There is so much more I would love to tell you if I had more time, but I don't. If you would like to know more about tool-assisted speedruns in general, come to taskvideos.org. If you would like to know more about playing tool-assisted speedruns on real consoles, go to task.bot. And uh, if you happen to be interested in having me research projects like this, let me know. I could use the word. <laughs> um, thank you. Sorry, thank you. Thank you so much, DEFCON, for having me again, and I look forward to the next opportunity. Thanks, all.